Hello again. This is just a very quick and dirty tutorial into using Registax 6. Now, it's not an advanced tutorial, it's just basically aimed at the absolute beginner that just needs to get started. Um, and, you know, this is what I do. Uh, some of it might be right, some of it might be wrong, but, you know, for the time being, it works for me and, it, you know, I'm fairly happy with it. So, first of all, what I'll do is just show you in close up the settings that go down on the left hand side so that you can match them up with mine now in particular I would like to draw your attention to this one which is the I've got the best frames per cent set at 65 the reason being that I'm I'm recently working with a newish camera that takes well over 2,000 frames sometimes so I'm just actually limiting it because I've got a, an overall uh, number of frames of like over 2,000 or about 2,000 then you know even a thousand frames stacked or or slightly more at 65% is quite good if you're using a webcam where you're taking maybe 1200 frames then I would just up that best frames percent to you know maybe 80 even 90 um, you know and, and just play about with that section of it so the first thing that we need to do next is go to select and choose the AVI that you're going to use so let's choose that one and open it now again this will take a moment because it's quite a large AVI it's about 2 gig there we go now the first thing that you need to do is look at your picture and look for an item of detail now if we look closely here we can see there's what we call a badge it's one of the red spots on Jupiter's surface and you know just concentrate on a fine piece of detail then at the same time move down to where it says go to frame and just hold it in and it will play your animation um, you know your actual AVI now you'll see that that little piece of detail I'm just going to go back and forwards there and, and close up on it you'll see that that little piece of detail comes in and out and sometimes it just stands out more sharply than in others it's you know that's the result of seeing when you've been taking your AVI so go backwards and forwards a few times until you see one of those sections where detail just seems to jump out at you once you've done that and we've got a, a decent picture there you can see that you know some of the details are, are fairly good the next thing that we need to do is move up to set align points next just have a look at those align points on, on a planet with a webcam I would be looking to just reduce the number of align points a little bit and some people struggle with Registax 5 um, just you know persevere with it especially with your align points you may find that you'll actually get better results if you drop the align points down even to sort of two or one um, in general this this new camera that I'm testing tends to just turn out a better quality of AVI anyway so that I can get more align points in there once you're happy with the number of align points what I then like to do is go up here and click on show align data and I clicked the wrong one there so it's show align data that will come in in a moment now the next thing we do is go to a line which is already underlined in green telling us that that's the next stage so click on a line and just wait for a moment you can see that it's actually counting down in percentages here of how much it's of your of your AVI it's aligned okay the alignments finished and now we can see the align data showing which is the what we ticked earlier and you can see that we've got some markings and that that I have absolutely no idea what they mean but if you slide the bottom slider along you see a section of uh, what I can only describe as lollipops now the green streaks from the lollipops are showing the degree of movement in your AVI and you can actually sort of just slide about a little bit with that slider and you can see that this reference frame now it's got less movement in it in, in, in comparison to the rest of the AVI and that's what I look for I tend to just sort of just move it about and find some quite short lollipops such as that one now the next thing that we're going to do is move to limit so click on limit and next you'll see that everything's sort of lined up there and when we've got you know the lollipops have no longer got any sticks on them next just click on stack 
the screen will go black that's not a problem it's just it's cutting down on processor usage by showing you what's going on um, you know it's, it's like not showing you what's going on so that it can get on with it and just perform a little bit faster again you'll get the percentage screen at the bottom um, obviously when the bars got to the end that'll be the next stage Okay, it's now finished with the stack, and as you can see, you'll get an image that is looking not much better than the, the one that you chose as reference frame very early on, um, you know, as you were flicking through flame, frames and finding a good one. What we do next is move up to Wavelet and click that. Now, what I like to do at this next stage, firstly, uh, with planetary, and especially with the webcam, because they are a lot more prone to it, is... Uh, color shift and color fringing uh, on your planet surface which sometimes you may see there's sort of an orange fringe or a blue fringe just on the edges of your planet all you do to fix that is move over to, to here click on RGB align just enclose your planet within the square like so and next I find the estimate does a just you know as good a job as anything and you'll see the color shifts once it's finished the button will will go out from orange it goes orange as you click on it Whoop, and there we go it's finished and it actually shows you the adjustments that it's made that's it for that section next we're on over to the wavelets and this is possibly what causes more people headaches than anything else just play with them you know you're not going to do any harm because you can always just reset them if um, you know if you if you have any problems um, what you do is basically just play with your wavelets. You can see now that everything's starting to come in sharper. Play about with your wavelets and, you know, slide them up and down, go to random ones, just, you know, experiment is, is you know, the best thing that I can suggest to you. And as you can see, that's now starting to become a lot sharper. There's more detail showing up in the planet surface and everything. And in general, that's where I'm going to leave this one. Um, like I said, just play about more with your settings. Now what you may find is if you've loaded your AVI into Registax, you may find that it's too dark for you to be able to see the details that are changing when you change your wavelets. What you do in that case is move over to this right hand side and just alter the brightness and contrast. Just bring it up a little bit like so and then play about with your wavelets again. Once you've got something you're happy with, go over to this top button that says do all like so. Now then, I prefer to do my brightness and contrast adjustments in Photoshop or in my graphics package afterwards. So at this point, what I do is I go back over to the contrast and brightness sliders and I click on reset. Then I click on save image. Now the best way to save your image at this stage is as a TIFF. So that's TIFF 16-bit RGB. Uh, click on save and just basically save your image. Once you've saved your image, obviously then just you can close Registax, just open it up then in your favourite graphics package and, you know, possibly tweak the contrast and the levels and maybe just up the saturation a little bit to just bring a little bit more of the colour out. Um, but looking at that now, you can tell that that's not a bad Jupiter at all, uh, especially considering what it is that we started with. And hopefully that'll have got you started with Registax and, and just, you know, um, set you up on the road. And once again, thanks for watching.